Imagine blocking out all the noise. One of the reasons I have found it challenging to meditate consistently is that I often find myself in environments that make focus nearly impossible. Recently, I spent a few sessions inside an infrared sauna, followed by a float tank. And it's remarkable what a locked door and a small little tank can do for focus, not to mention self-care and your mental health. This is the 5 a.m. Miracle, episode number 430. Float tanks, isolation, meditation, and deep contemplation. Good morning. I am Jeff Sanders, and this is the podcast dedicated to dominating your day before breakfast. For Christmas this year, or I guess we call it last year, my wife Tessa bought me a really cool experience, or a series of cool experiences, which is that I had the opportunity to do something I've never done before, actually two somethings, both the infrared sauna and the float tank. I have wanted to try a float tank for many years and just honestly never got around to doing it, and so the opportunity to go on three different sessions into a float tank and then double that up by actually choosing the infrared sauna first and then followed up by a float tank. It's a remarkable thing. And we're going to dig into that this week. Not just what I experienced, but more importantly, what it means to experience intense focus, intense isolation, and ultimately what is more deep contemplation and the opportunity to be one with yourself in a focus session. I had some really cool experiences and ones that I want to be able to dig into, not just here in the episode this week, but further on uh, on this podcast and in my own kind of journey for, we can call it better mental health, a more intentional focus on really centering myself and becoming one with my own crazy thoughts, because I've got quite a few of those. Uh, You may as well, which is why I think we need these types of things a lot more often. So let's get into this. Uh, The content this week, I'm calling uh, a series of items, both float tanks and saunas, as well as isolation and meditation, all kind of wrapped around this aura of what it means to have deep focus and contemplation time for you to be you. And so let's kick this off with my experience in the infrared sauna. First of all, I've discussed saunas on this podcast before, but specifically from the angle of a traditional sauna. Uh, If you go into any typical gym, uh, like the one that I go to here in Nashville, the YMCA, they have a sauna attached to the pool area. And if you go into that, it's your you know nice. There's a big heater uh, that's an electric heater that heats the room up, makes it very hot. Um, it gets really humid in there. Um, it's not one of the saunas you pour water onto hot rocks. In fact, if you pour water onto these heaters, uh, you'll kill the sauna. Uh, it's designed for you to just experience the heat, um, usually around 185 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's very hot and extremely amazing as, as an experience that I like to do after every workout. Uh, it's a great way to finish a workout and one that I prefer as often as possible. An infrared sauna, though, is a totally different type of sauna that actually heats up you, not really the room. Uh, it's I don't understand the science behind this as well. Um, it's kind of like lasers from the way that I view it, uh, but it's these lights that heat you up um, in a really interesting way. Uh, one that I think that everyone should be able to experience, kind of the back and forth of choosing different types of saunas uh, to understand how it affects you. So for me, this was my first infrared sauna experience. And at the location that I went to here in Nashville, it's called the Pure Sweat Float Studio. 
It's actually right on the edge of one of the wealthiest neighborhoods in Nashville, the Bell Mead uh, neighborhood or district or city. I'm not sure what they call it now. Anyway, it's a really wealthy area, a really beautiful studio. And if you live in the Nashville area, definitely check it out. Uh, if not, uh, you may have a, a studio like this nearby that offers saunas as well as float tank experiences. And so for me, I just hopped into this place a couple of months ago and wanted to see what is this infrared sauna all about. And in my first session, uh, they told me, oh, by the way, you're going to be totally naked. <laughs> There's no no clothing required. And in fact, they encouraged me to make sure that I would be totally nude um, in this sauna experience because you're in a one-person sauna booth, in this case, with a shut door in your own private space and this particular sauna actually had a tablet uh, built into the wall, so I was able to watch Netflix <laughs> during this, which I don't usually do that in my sauna at the gym. I just veg out for 20 to 30 minutes, just experiencing the heat. No technology involved. But in this case, there's a, literally a tablet built into the side, so I watch Netflix. Uh, which was really nice because you're in an infrared sauna for a much longer session. Um, in this case, about 45 minutes. Um, and the temperature on the first time I went in was around 150 degrees Fahrenheit. The next time was 160. And it's which is very hot for 45 minutes. That really will get to you after a while. Now, if you build up tolerance, these things are easier. But if it's your first time going in, that 45 minutes is a long session. And so I was glad that I had some distraction from Netflix as well as a, a big, big bottle of water. But this was a great experience and the type of one that I can totally see how someone would install an infrared sauna into their house. Um, they're actually not that expensive and they come with some really wonderful health benefits. And it's the kind of thing that could become part of your health regimen, your daily routine to say that, you know, I'm going to spend this time in the sauna, uh, whether you're watching Netflix or not. It's a really great way to, to feel like you're just wiping the slate clean. Because I left these sessions feeling very relaxed, very hot, very just like I got in touch with myself in a really cool way. So if the infrared sauna is appealing to you, if a traditional sauna is appealing to you, uh, take that chance to do so. Honestly, I can't imagine now going to the gym and not having the sauna as part of that experience. Um, in this case, it was more of a standalone sauna uh, without me actually exercising, and that still had incredible benefits. And so if you have the chance to use a sauna, take that chance. If you have the chance to meditate in a sauna, to, to spend some time alone, uh, just sweating a lot, <laughs> take that chance because it's a really, really cool thing. And now for the second area, let's get to the float tank. This was the one that I was most excited to try. This was actually the experience that my wife paid for as a gift for me to try out and something that I've always been curious to see, you know, what if I were to float on some really intense salt water and inside a small space and see what happens? Like, is it something I'm going to freak out because it's a small claustrophobic inducing environment? Or is this going to be something that really allows me to be enlightened and really go deep into my own mind? Now, just like the infrared sauna at this particular studio, uh, when you float in one of their tanks, you're doing so totally nude. And that's part of the experience. Um, it's also really interesting because I've never floated before until just recently. And I didn't really know the protocol. And if you never have floated before, there is a, at least at this um, studio, they have you take a shower beforehand. Um, you can apply this kind of a vitamin uh, lotion onto any cuts and scrapes you have on your body. Because if you don't, when you get into salt water, you can imagine what happens. It stings really, really intensely. Um, and I missed a few places uh, on all of my experiences. And so, yes, it, it will sting. It won't kill you, but it, it, it is noticeable. And so if you're offered the chance to put on, I think it's vitamin A and E as they offered me as so I put that on and that helps a lot. Um, I wore some earplugs and then I crawled into this tank and I closed the lid. And then at this studio, they piped through some nice meditative music 
for me. Uh, the first two sessions, I had some cool like neural binaural beats. Uh, the second one, I had one called Nine Frequencies, uh, which is a really great, just like slow meditative sound. The third one, I requested some new music and it never turned on. So I had a 40 minute uh, float tank session with no music, which was also interesting. And this was kind of part of my personal experiments. I wanted to see what this whole thing was about. So on my very first session, I went in kind of high energy, kind of agitated, kind of like I wasn't relaxed. And so I spent the entire 40 minutes just messing around. I was spinning in circles. I was testing the lights, testing the music, uh, trying to float in different ways. And it's a really, it's a weird experience if you've not been in a small space floating, completely floating. Because I, you know, even though I weighed about 200 pounds, I was able to easily float on this really intense salt water. And they give you, in this case, a little like ring to put your head on if you want to, to keep your head above water. I tried it both with that and without, and I actually preferred without. So I was just floating with my body on the water and doing my best in all the sessions, um, except the first one, (laughs) to just relax and just listen and just breathe and just be for that time period. And like I said, the first session, I was just kind of, you know, testing all the the buttons, trying to see what this thing was all about. When I went back a few weeks later for session number two, I got in real deep, like really meditating in in a deep way, really relaxing in a way that I have not done before. And that one was actually paired with a sauna session beforehand. And so when I left that entire experience of an infrared sauna for 45 minutes and then 40 more minutes floating I was so relaxed afterwards. Session number two for me was just so beautiful. And I'm, I don't know if that's the kind of thing you can repeat frequently unless you go into these sessions, um, prepared for that. And I say that because my first and my third sessions did not have that. I was much more high energy, much, maybe I was just more stressed out or had a lot on my mind. And that's kind of how these things go, whether it's exercise or meditation Every experience is different, right? What you bring to the table will affect how you experience these types of experiences, which will then affect your results afterwards. So I did some deep meditation, though, in session number two and could really see the benefit for someone doing a much longer session. Um, It's common to do a float tank for as long as 90 minutes. Um, Mine were only 40 And I felt like 40 was too long for some of them. But on that second session, it was it was good. I really got into it. And so if you're looking for a place to block out the noise, a place to literally be inside of a tank and it's just you by yourself in a quiet space, it's beautiful. And it's really rejuvenating in a sense that if you if you've been experiencing a lot of stress, if you've been under a lot of pressure and you want the chance to just veg out by yourself, totally alone, and just be, I think the float tank has a lot of potential. Now, on the final third session that I just did a couple of days ago, I did the double session again with the infrared sauna and tied that with the float tank. And in this third session, the infrared sauna was really hot, and I barely made it through the 45 minutes. And I think they had the temperature turned up potentially, and I was cooking. Uh, But it still felt good. And then I went into the float tank and was, I guess, just again, could not get myself settled. And so I was kind of bored. I wasn't really into it. Uh, Mentally, I had more going on. And so I left that kind of feeling like "Mm, that wasn't really what I wanted. But I think that's kind of part of what these things can be. That once again, we bring to the experience what we bring and we're going to get out. what We expect to get out. And so if you go into these things experienced and relaxed and ready, I think there's a lot of great potential. But if you bring to the experience high stress and a lot of anxiety and maybe you're paranoid about the small spaces or the intense heat or floating naked by yourself or whatever the thing is that might be on your mind, that could also affect your outcomes. But I think that all of this is to say that I really got a lot out of these experiences. I really find the intentional practice of self-care, the intentional practice of slowing things down, of giving yourself some mental space to just do the equivalent of nothing, of just sitting, of just floating. The stillness and the quiet that comes from that is valuable. 
and, and something to be treasured and something to prioritize on a consistent basis. Now, how often would you need to go in for a float tank or a sauna session? You know, I was told uh, by this studio that for a float tank, you should go in once every three to four weeks and for a sauna session, essentially up to once a day. Now, I know from going to the, my gym that if I can pair a, a sauna session at the end of a workout, I'll go to the sauna as much as five to seven times a week. So literally every day. But if, if you're going to do a flow tank experience, I mean, if you have easy access to one and you can afford to, to go, then more could be better. Um, I say uh, afford to go because these things are not uh, cheap compared to your average uh, wellness experience. Um, once again, this particular studio I went to is in a very wealthy area of Nashville. And so you could spend as much as one to two to three hundred dollars uh, US dollars per month um, just going to these sessions, um, which is why for me, I kind of I'm going to pause before I go back again for a while. Um, so money is a factor here. Uh, but this brings me to my next point. Let's imagine for a second that you either don't have access to a float tank or you are prohibited from one due to finances or whatever the case may be. I don't think you need one. I don't think that you need a float tank. You don't need a sauna. We don't need these gadgets to slow down. We don't need the fancy experiences to tap into what we're trying to tap into, which is the point of going to these things. And the point is not to do something that sounds cool or you could put a picture on Instagram and say, look at me in a sauna, look at me in a float tank. I mean, you could do that and that's fun. But the point is to slow down, to breathe, just be with yourself for a few minutes a day. And that can happen in a lot of places. I'm not really good at meditation when you ask me like, Jeff, do you meditate regularly? No. However, If you put me in the right environment, I I do meditate and I do get value from it. And if I get the chance to sit for 20 minutes in a sauna, if I get the chance to lay down in a float tank, if I get 20 minutes by myself in my own house where I can just sit on the couch or lay on the floor and just breathe for a few minutes, it's a valuable time. You know, previously on this podcast, I discussed the Wim Hof method, which has a lot to do with cold exposure, a lot of deep, intense breathing. Um, I bought his course, his online course, a few years ago, and I only got partway through it. And then I guess I got distracted. I didn't finish it. Um, So I am restarting Wim Hof's online course now um, with the intention of that becoming kind of part of my own home practice, Um, a way to tap into what these things can provide without having to go to a studio, without having access to the you know fancier equipment, you can get a lot of value from breathing, from being outside in the cold, taking a cold shower, um, or getting access to super hot weather so you can get a deep sweat. We have access to this type of environment in a lot of places. So depending on where you live and what you have access to, my guess is you have access to slowness. You have access to extreme temperatures. You have access to taking a few minutes to just be one with yourself. So yes, you can meditate, you can focus, you can isolate, you can allow those experiences to give you a few minutes of rest. And then depending on how those sessions go, you get to decide how often you need them to be your best, to allow your mental health to improve, to allow your stress levels to go down to take the busyness of life and the constant focus on goal achievement and productivity, which I love to discuss those things on this podcast. I'm all about that. You know, I'm a, I'm a kind of guy that drinks a lot of coffee and I, I do love to be high energy, which is also why I think this type of practice is so valuable for someone like me and likely someone like you. If you view yourself as a high achiever, a go-getter, the ambitious type who wants to get things done, achieve big goals, move forward in your career, you know, improve that resume, like be that kind of person who's just out to make something happen. What comes with that without question is stress and anxiety and intensity and a fast pace. And you have to counter that. There has to be a balance to be able to say, yes, we work hard. But then we play hard and playing hard doesn't actually have to be hard. (laughs) Playing hard could mean taking a nap. It could mean laying down for an hour. It could mean just breathing. 
And knowing me, I'm not going to just sit down and meditate without a reason. So for, let's go back to this reason why I tend to meditate better when I'm in a sauna or better when I'm in a float tank. It's because it's a controlled environment. If you leave me to my own devices and just say, Jeff, today is your day. You have all the time that you need. You can do whatever you want to do. There's a pretty good chance I will not spend a single minute meditating. Right? I'm just not going to do it. I'm going to choose other activities that are more high energy, more go gettery type of, of things. Right? Those are the kind of tasks I want to do. So if I have a controlled environment where meditation is expected, is the norm, that's what you're going to do in that space, well, then I'm going to do it. And so if you're that kind of person who just says, you know what, I, I need to meditate, but I don't. I need to take care of myself, but I don't. Go to a structured place. Take a yoga class. Take a class in meditation. Sign up for a float tank experience. Right? Go do the thing that puts you in the environment that makes that result guaranteed. Then you'll have the chance to actually calm down. You'll have the chance to actually experience these things for what they are, which is beautiful. And then you get the isolation, you get the meditation, you get the ideal focus you need for your health and eventual productivity that will come from the fact that you have calmed your mind, centered your thoughts, and prepared yourself for the next big goal to be achieved. And for that action step this week, yes, try a float tank. If you've never tried one before, I recommend you do so at least once in your life. You know, floating nude by yourself in a small tank with no one else to disturb you is quite eye-opening and could be the best mental health break you need to clear your mind and reset. JeffSanders.com slash 430 is the place to go for the episode notes. Also, subscribe to this podcast. JeffSanders.com slash subscribe will give you a list of lots of apps to choose from. That's all I've got for you here on the 5 a.m. Miracle Podcast this week. Until next time, you have the power to change your life, and the fun begins bright and early.